Dante to introduce us for our second keynote speaker. But first, let me introduce the background of our moderator, Ms. Juan Yuliante, MPD. Her education is Masters of English. That was way back 2010 to 2012. And she also has some textbooks, Get Along with Business. It was in ISBN 978-602-796754. Then he, she also has the Speak Up, Improve Your English for the second textbook. And the third one is English Presentation Practices. That was way back on 2013. So the experiences, she is an English lecturer at Tana Laut State Polytechnic, South Kalimantan from 2009. Then she is also a principal of Playground and Kindergarten at Fan School Tonas Harapan Bilingual School, Silingwense Bugor from 2006 to 2009. And also, she was a, a kindergarten teacher at ABC Kids International Schools, Raffles Hill, Cebu Bor from 2000 to 2006. And there is a lot more. She also has a lot of publication. We have her body parts recognition application based on augmented reality or the ER using Android. And it was just published last 2023 from the journal Humaniora Technology. And the second one, she also published web-based digital storytelling for the elementary school students. And it was just last year from 2023. Wow, very fantastic. So she got an award from 2021 as the Politala Outstanding Lecturer. And from 2015, she also awarded as Pulitala Outstanding Lecturer. And the last one is the best speaker from the International Seminar on the Scientific Issues and Trends, the BSI Kalimalang S. Jakarta. For, for much welcome ado, let's welcome Juan Yuliante MPD. Let's give her a round of applause. Okay. Thank you. Dustin, am I audible? Yes, you're audible now. Okay, thank you. This is my turn to be a moderator. Thank you for the handsome, the most handsome master of ceremony, Dustin Lorenyu, to give me the opportunity to lead this webinar. Okay, um, I'd like to tell you about Dr. Asif Khan, right? This is the keynote speaker. Okay. Okay. Uh, the bio data that I received about Asif Khan, Dr. Asif Khan, is he is a CEO and a founder of and scientist scientist incorporation taiwan he is also a research consultant in quantitative research analysis organization taoxiang taiwan in 2024 until 2026 and he also research consultant ministry of economic affair project carbon footprint in 2023 until 2025 Dr. Asif Khan, also PhD National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology Marketing, and also PhD Southern Taiwan University of Science and Technology Information and Innovation Management. Dr. Asif Khan, please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, Dr. Asif Khan, how are you today? Nice to meet you. Please on your microphone. Dr. Asifa? Uh, yeah, okay. How are you today? I'm good. I'm good. How about you? Uh, very well. Happy to see you. Uh, pleased to meet you too. It's okay. My Thank you. Dr. Asifa, are you ready to share your material for sure, sure. our audience today? Sure. 
Okay. 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 The African, the floor and the room is yours. Okay. Uh, Dean Tan, I'm uh, currently um, working as a full time researcher as a, uh, previously, you know, was explained, I'm doing research consultancy jobs for uh, some organizations. I'm also doing some research uh, projects for some universities in Taiwan, some universities in China, uh, some universities in Macau, one university in the uh, United States. So other than that, I'm also doing a second PhD from Southern Taiwan University of Science and Technology. Um, so I just, uh, I can say I just started my research journey. I hope I can learn a lot by doing research collaborations with uh, uh, Valley Institute, the current institute, and you know all the uh, committee members who invited me for this conference. I'm really thankful. So uh, in this uh, three years journey of my uh, of my research, uh, this is uh, the number of achievements or the number of papers which I did. And my total impact factor is uh, fifty five point seven four. Uh, until now, I have uh, 16 journal publications. Uh, in this journal publications, almost 12 publications are uh, SSCI index. Uh, three publications are uh, Scopus, and one publication is ESCI index. I have a uh, total of 11 forthcoming publications. Inshallah, they will be published soon. Uh, most of them are in uh, Cuban journals. I, uh, Hopefully, if uh, next time I'm invited as a speaker or uh, uh, a trainer, I hope I can share those uh, research ideas as well. Uh, I have a total of two international conferences. And uh, in terms of peer reviews, until now, uh, I have done like 49 peer reviews. So uh, this is like a short research contributions in my three years uh, of research, full-time research job. Uh, since the conference is based on innovation, uh, so therefore uh, my idea was to kind of select those articles which are somewhat related to innovation or which have uh, variable or ideas or concept related to innovation or can be linked uh, to marketing and innovation. So because my uh, major is marketing, so I hope I can uh, give you some ideas by the papers which are recently published and most of them are reputed journals. So I will share the ideas. I hope I can help. Okay. Um, my a most recent publication uh, was published in TSSCI journal. So TSSCI is a kind of, uh, in Taiwan, they call it Taiwan SSCI. They have their own uh, SSCI index, which, uh, um, you know, which are indexed in some, um, you can say top uh, public universities. Uh, the journal name is Corporate Management Review. and. Uh, I think uh, this publication took a total of seven to eight months from submission until it got accepted. There were two uh, revision uh, requests which were uh, done successfully. Uh, the name of the article is Understanding the Mechanism and Impact of Workplace on Unemployed Innovation Behavior or Unemployed Innovative Behavior. So as, as you can see, I have highlighted the keyword employee innovative behavior. So uh, this research was done in collaboration with um, uh, National Sun Yat-sen University uh, and uh, National Gulf University. And our main focus was on two of the key 
words. One was workplace fun and one was employee related behavior. Like I can say, they were the uh, basic selling points of uh, this research. So, uh, this is the framework. I will explain it in a while. So, first of all, the most important uh, construct of this framework is employee related behavior. So, what's employing the way to work behavior so uh that it includes the methods the day-to-day -day activities all the routine tasks of employees and uh, which they do on daily basis but it deals with the attitude of those employees or how they want to improve those tasks or how they want to improve those practices and what kind of innovative methods are they using to improve those practices or those day-to-day -day operations? So this was like one of the main key selling points of uh, this research. So I would urge the audiences or the future researchers, they can consider using this construct since it can be very helpful in the future publications. Uh, by the way, there's also one another construct. Uh, we, are, we, of course, we know psychological, uh, psychological capital and organizational commitment, you know, they're the most commonly used. So I cannot say they are the selling points of the paper. Uh, there's another construct in this paper, which I can say is uh, relatively new. Uh, that one is workplace fun. Okay, so how can like, Workplace one, like employees having a good time or satisfaction, like satisfaction to a level of enjoyment, you know, how they are socializing with their coworkers, how they have fun activities, how they have management support for them, how they interact with the clients, all of these things in a very fun way or in a very satisfying way creates workplace fun. So this is also one of another construct with I would, which I would urge uh, my future researchers to uh, incorporate in their future research. Um, so this is the second article, uh, which was based on innovation or somewhat based on innovation. So the name of the article was Evaluating the Mediating Mechanism of Perceived Trust and Risk Towards Cryptocurrency and Empirical Research. Uh, this was recently published in uh, Sage Open. It's a US-based SSCI index uh, journal. Uh, although the impact factor is not too much, but uh, the journalist has very good reputation. And this article took around one year you know, from the initial uh, submission until the final publication. So what, uh, now next I'll explain what uh, variables or uh, constructs were related to uh, innovation or technology and um, that's somewhat connected to the cryptocurrency market. So as you can see in this model, you know, perceived trust, perceived risk, intention to use, they are the most commonly used constructs. So if these constructs are used, uh, you know, all together, uh, I would hardly think, you know, the, the journal will accept a paper like this because they are most commonly used. So what we can do is we can add some new research constructs and add it into a new con context. So in this uh, research, what we did, we added technology readiness and we added technology mindfulness. So these were the two uh, constructs. And the context was related to cryptocurrency. So, which I can assume these three points led to the possible or the, I can say the final publication of this article. 
Yeah, uh, so let me briefly explain like what's technology uh, technological uh, readiness. It reflects a person's belief and attitudes towards technology, but it is not an indicator of their ability to use technology. So technology readiness is not like time, like perceived ease of use or perceived usefulness. It's not their ability to use it. It is their personal belief. Uh, the other um, construct we was used in this research is technology mindfulness. So technological mindfulness can be defined as a general mindset motivated by an individual's perception of the environment and openness to information technology. Okay, how open or how adaptive is a person to the technology and to the environment he's working in? So I would urge my future researchers to uh, consider using these constructs in their research. And uh, these constructs can be easily linked to the traditional uh, constructs which we normally use in our researches. It includes TAM, TBB, um, some other uh, concepts like flow. It can easily be linked to these. And um, Okay, the third article, which is somewhat related to innovation and technology, is uh, an article which was published in Frontiers in Psychology. Uh, so Frontiers in Psychology is a Q1 journal. It is SSCI index. Uh, and this uh, article was published in I guess 2022, and it was published pretty easily. It took like almost three or four months. Uh, we had two rounds of revision, but it was done pretty quick. Uh, the name of the article is uh, the student's flow experience with the continuous intention of using online English platforms. So as you can see uh, over here, I have highlighted uh, the, the words online English platforms these words are not like the construct, but these are the context in which the research is done. But the main variable which is used in researches like uh, online English platform or you know uh, an application platform or a website platform, if you want to measure the attitude or measure the belief or perception or satisfaction, of different audiences. The main construct, which is which can be used or which I would urge the researchers to use is flow. Because flow is a psychological concept and it is mostly related to um, the researches which are based on platform. It can be an online platform, any online platform. I have done also another research, it's published, but over here I have not added that one. Uh, that research also uses flow, but uh, that research deals with the senior citizens, okay? Senior citizens using uh, mobile apps or using Facebook app to shop. Okay, what's their experience? What's their psychological experience? Uh, so flow is like a psychological construct. And in this uh, framework, as you can see, luckily flow has many antecedents. They, these are only some of the antecedents which I found to be related to this research. So in future, you can link many antecedents to flow. And um, also, uh, luckily, ECM model, the expectation confirmation model, is also linked to flow and flow can be also linked to time. It has many researches in which flow is related to time, technology acceptance model, perceived usefulness and uh, perceived ease of use. So in future, if there's any research uh, based on uh, online platform, I hope uh, I, I uh, my idea works and you can use flow as one of the constructs. 
Okay, my uh, next article, uh, which is somewhat related to innovation, was published in Sustainability. It's also SSCI Index, and uh, it's a key to journal. The impact factor is pretty good, it's 3.889. And the title is uh, The Impact of CSR on Sustainable Innovation and Dexterity, the Mediating Role of uh, Sustainable Supply Chain Management and Second Order Social Capital. So uh, the, this paper um, honestly had many new key selling points, but since this conference is related to innovation, so I can say like one of the key selling points was uh, the key word or the construct of sustainable innovation and dexterity, it can also be called as green innovation or green innovation and dexterity. So um, now let me share the model of uh, this research with you. Okay, so um, first of all, like what is sustainable innovation and dexterity? So it there are many constructs related to ambidexterity, and every construct which has the word ambidexterity will be divided into two. One would be exploitation, and second would be exploration. Okay, so in this, sustainable innovation and dexterity is also divided into two parts. It's made up of two parts. One is uh, sustainable exploitative innovation. And the second is sustainable exploratory innovation. So sustainable exploitative innovation would urge the managers or the policymakers to make modifications or changes to the current product and make it sustainable. On the other hand, sustainable exploratory innovation would be a strategy by managers or practitioners to find new sustainable ideas and make or design the products based on the new sustainable ideas. So what's so special about this uh, construct? Traditionally, what managers did, they would use either one of the strategy. Either they would modify or they would um, find a new idea. But ambidexterity concept urges the practitioners or policymakers that they need to use both the strategies simultaneously together in order to succeed in the rapidly changing environment. So uh, this is like one of the key selling points of uh, this article. And um, there's also another construct which is, uh, I can say, not related to technology or innovation, but most of the articles um, can be linked. Most of the technological or innovative article can be linked to this construct. Uh, that construct is sustainable supply chain management. So since nowadays, many countries, they have the green energy or sustainable energy, or um, they have the new laws or policy, for the UN sustainability goals, or to achieve green zero goal. So what I would suggest to the researchers if there is uh, any construct which has the word green or sustainable in it, I would urge to use that construct, make or compose any framework which is related to sustainable, or sustainable energy and the chances of publication are, uh, based on my experience, uh, they are somewhat higher because nowadays this uh, sustainability concept is at its boom. Many people are, uh, sorry, many policymakers, many governments, many countries, they're finding new strategies to uh, cope up with, to control the climate change so that's uh, one of the other construct or one of the other advice which I can give to the future researchers. And uh, uh, the other article is 
or the other proceedings. This one is the proceedings. This was uh, done in an international conference, uh, which was hosted by Southern Taiwan Ministry of Science and Technology. I believe uh, uh, Muhammad Ghali was also one of the presenters in this uh, uh, this conference. So uh, the title of the paper which I presented in this conference was uh, Modeling the Impact of BDA AI on Green Supply Chain Management, the Mediating Role of Supply Chain Indexity. So uh, this research had many new concepts or many new constructs or many selling points. Um, this is also this research has also been modified uh, significantly. I have added many more uh, variables into this research, and now it is in the final uh, publication or acceptance, but partially accepted at uh, our Journal of Big Data, which is like a ten impact factor Q1 journal. So I would strongly urge uh, the future researchers to either uh, use one or all of the constructs in different ways uh, in their researches. So um, the main key uh, innovative uh, construct in this research is BDA AI. So BDA is like big data analytics and AI is artificial intelligence. So what's so new about this construct? So previously, what organizations did, they would use big data analytics and AI separately for their organizations. But because of the changing environment, because of the intense competition, uh, nowadays they're urged to combine both big data and AI and use them together to cope up with the environment. So this is a very interesting construct. It has been, um, I cannot say intensely used, but some because this is a new construct, there are some researchers which are using this construct. So uh, I would urge the researchers to use this uh, construct. And of course, uh, the second construct is supply chain ambidexterity. So as I have um, stated before, any construct which has ambidexterity will be made up of two parts, exploration and exploitation. You know, they will have the exploration strategies and the exploitation strategy. So supply chain ambidexterity is made up of two parts. The first part is supply chain exploration. So supply chain exploration means uh, the managers or the policy makers should modify the current strategies to cope up with the effective use of supply chain. And on the other hand, supply chain exploitation. Uh, so this, um, uh, this urges the managers or the policymakers to design or compose new strategies for the supply chain. And of course, the third construct is green supply chain management, which has been also used in the previous research. So as I have uh, stated before, uh, green supply chain management can be easily linked to uh, most of the technological or innovative concepts or constructs. Uh, so until now, I have explained like um, my researches on uh, different innovative uh, concepts and how I linked. Uh, next, I would like to explain uh, if there are any uh, beginners in our audiences. So to the beginner researchers, how they can find uh, a new research gap and what's actually a new research gap? Is it only finding a new relationship? which most of the researchers, they confuse. Okay, I found a new relationship and I have already found a gap. Technically, that's not a gap. It's one of the gap, but it's not the only gap. So what I would uh, explain now to the new researchers, if you want to 
find a gap. Okay, one of the gap would be the research link. The second gap would be the context on in which context you want to do the research. And the third would be methodology. Whether your methodology is suitable for the research, that is also one of the gaps. Okay, so uh, let's suppose you want to uh, you want to design a new research framework and you want to uh, find a new research gap. So this way is what um, we follow, uh, or which uh, which is followed mostly by me and my colleagues. What we do is, uh, for example, we have a topic we want to find. Uh, a new research gap in supply chain and dexterity. So what we would do, we would open many research papers on supply chain and dexterity, many new or recent papers on supply chain and dexterity. Okay, once they're open, you need to have a pen and a piece of paper and open each and every one of the uh, one of the journal paper. And you can easily find the research gap paragraph if it's a good research, mostly these researches uh, have um, a gap paragraph at the end of introduction. So I would urge instead of reading the complete article, which would be a waste of time, and abstract is also, uh, I can say, you cannot get the complete idea about the research gap. So number one, check the research gap in the last paragraph of the introduction probably you will find the research gap or what's new about the article or what's the author's idea about the research gap in their manuscript. And the next which you can do is you can check the literature review. Uh, you don't need to read it completely, just check the headings. And below the literature review, there will be a research framework. You need to check the research framework. Okay, so for example, this is like one very simple research framework. For example, we will check many uh, papers and many research frameworks. And um, in research frameworks, you have a very clear idea about what kind of relationships is this paper um, trying to find or has already found and you know, they want to um, you know, conclude about it. So let's suppose this is like one research framework which has three constructs, supply chain and index strategy, green supply chain management, and uh, one moderating variable, networking capability. Okay, so if I have read many research papers on supply chain and index strategy, what I would do to improve this research framework? Okay, I can add, Antecedents, antecedents like okay, up the antecedents to supply chain and dexterity. What can improve supply chain and dexterity? What can be the antecedents? I can check many papers, or I have already checked many papers, and I will put the antecedents. Okay, how to further enhance the relationships or um, the framework of my new research? Okay. The previous research, uh, the previous research have uh, used uh, networking capability as a moderating variable. Uh, I can find another moderating variable, or I can find some mediating variables which I can put in between. Okay, this is the second research gap based on the framework. Okay, third. In this research, you know, it's a very simple research. You can say supply chain and dexterity, hypothesis one, and it's impacting green supply chain management. Okay, green supply chain management is one of the variables, but what are the consequences of green supply chain management? So what I would do, I would make, I would, um, I would make like several uh, relationships of green supply chain management and consequence variables. What are the consequences of green supply chain management? So in this way, you can have a very thorough research framework with many research gaps, but these are not the only research gaps, right? 
this is just the these are just the research gaps based on the research framework. Next, what we need to do is we need to apply this in a new context. For example, uh, normally sustainability, sustainable supply chain, or any concept related to sustainability is mostly done in developed countries or which we can say as a developed economy like United States, Canada. Okay, so they are the de developed economy. They have already done these researches. Okay, how about the developing economies? You can check whether these variables have been uh, implemented in a developing economy. If not, okay, you already have another research gap. You're um, using these variables in a developing economy. Okay, that's your another research gap. Okay, number third, how about the sample? Okay, let's suppose my framework is excellent, my context in terms of uh, population or the country is also excellent. For example, I want to do a research on sustainable supply chain. And I select the sample uh, of keynote employees, or you can say interns, and I give them the questionnaires to fill up. Do you think they can give me the right idea about the sustainability policies of an organization? Maybe some of them have some idea, maybe some of them do not have the idea about you know, what's the main goal of the organization for the next three years, five years, or 10 years. So the most suitable sample for this would be the policymakers or managers. Uh, like before, I have uh, uh, I have shared some of my researches on sustainable supply chain or on uh, ambidexterity or on big data. In all of these researches, my sample size, uh, sorry, my main sample was mid-level and high-level managers of organizations because, um, you know, technically, they are the ones who make the policies. They are the ones who already know which policies are implemented and which policies are to be implemented in the future. Okay, so now this is your third research gap. If you find the correct sample, which sample you want? with sampling technique, you already have the third research gap. Okay, and number four, implications. Okay, you have made an excellent research uh, framework. You have, uh, um, you know, identified the context and everything. You have good sample. What is the implication of your research? You need to justify the implication. Of course, there are implications. You have a new research idea. You need to find and justify. Nowadays, there are like three types of uh, implications. And most of the, I can say, good articles, which I have read, they have theoretical implications, okay? Uh, for example, sustainable supply chain management is a theoretical concept. How am I impacting the academic uh, implications regarding sustainable supply chain management. Is this variable being improved radically in my research? What's the academic contribution of other variables? How about the flow theory? For example, I'm using flow theory. Okay, is the flow theory improved in my research? Okay, improved in what way? This is my radical implication. So normally in theoretical implication, we need to put each and every variable which, which we have used and how the variable is improved in our research, each and every theory which we have used and how these theories are improved and have implications for other academic researchers. The second uh, point in implication is practical implications. Okay, how this research will have implications for uh, managers or for practitioners working in a company. How your researchers, uh, how your research can help those 
managers to achieve sustainable supply chain principles or uh, supply chain epidexterity. So you need to provide justifications. Okay, based on our research result, if managers improve big data AI, they will have good or they will have significant sustainable supply chain managers. And you can also cite some previous papers. Uh, sorry, the third one I didn't put here. There is also third uh, type of implications. It's called uh, policy makers implication. Uh, nowadays, um, you know, since the even the government, they have many uh, research organizations. So how can your research include improve the policy makers? Okay, policy makers can be the government. Policy makers can be the stakeholders, how can your research be used to create new strategies on the state level? Okay, for example, you, you, your research is on sustainability. How can the government uh, get benefit from your research and they can implement a new sustainability strategy? Okay. Uh, uh, third one is uh, research uh, design and methodology. How um, can you also find a gap in research design and methodology? Okay, what kind of um, sampling technique are you using? What kind of uh, questionnaire are you using? You can also check previous researches, which kind of um, uh, design and methodology they have used and whether that design and methodology can be implemented in your research. Okay, let's suppose uh, some previous research, they use a convenience sampling technique. Okay, you, you don't want to use that one because based on your economy or based on your research paper, you want to use another one. Okay, go for it, you have another research gap. Uh, there's also another point for example, if you're using a questionnaire, uh, I personally would use the questionnaire items of previous researches to save my time. So as long as you cite them and you acknowledge that you're using and modifying the previous um, questionnaire items of uh, previous researches, it's okay. It's ethical. You can use it and um, you can save a lot of time. For example, you want to measure big data AI. You don't need to um, you know, compose a new list of research items from scratch. What you can do, you can observe, you can read previous research papers which have used big data AI, modify their research items and cite them. Okay, I have used uh, you know, the research items from this research, and I have modified it. So in this way, you can save a lot of time. Okay, this is, uh, this one's a bit simple. You need to be very careful about your title. Uh, nowadays, um, keywords, um, you know, they're the main focus. For example, like if you want your research articles on Google Scholar, okay, how can um, its visibility be improved. You need to put in the right keywords. Okay, so be very careful about the keywords. And if your research uh, title can directly or indirectly indicate towards the main research question, that's a plus. Uh, some, some writing tips. Okay, uh, these writing tips, I cannot say they're correct or they're incorrect. These are the steps which we follow or which I follow personally uh, because since I'm doing uh, consultancy for uh, many organizations so in that case if I have to do new researches in collaboration with them I, I have to be very quick so I need to save time so normally what uh, books and what literature tells us, you know, we have to do the introduction, then we have to do the literature review, then we have to do the 
uh, methodology, then collect the data, and then do the analysis, and then do the conclusion. You know, this is the normal way. But uh, to save time, what I do, I would. Uh, my first step would not be introduction. My first step would not be literature review. My first step would be methodology and data collection. Okay, I would design a methodology. I would design a questionnaire. Um, I would distribute the questionnaire since we are a research organization. We have other, we have collaboration with other uh, research organizations which help us collect data. So I will forward my questionnaire to them. Let them collect data. For example, normally they take like one or two weeks to collect data. So in this one or two weeks, what I would do, I would start the literature review during the data collection. I would not waste the two weeks. Okay, once the literature review is done, I already have the data, I will do the data analysis. After the data analysis, I will write the discussion part. Okay, discussion about the finding, discussion about the implications, discussion about the limitations. Once I have complete knowledge about my research, I will write the introduction. One of the other reasons why I write the introduction at the end is introduction is the most significant part of your research. Normally, if, I, if I'm a reviewer, I will just read the introduction, I will have the idea about what this research is or how significant this research is. If my introduction is weak, already have created a bad impression. So once I already know the analysis, once I already know the research results, once I have uh, already, I'm already done with the implications, I'm already done with the limitations, I will make a very strong introduction. And after the, after the introduction, of course, the abstract. Um, so these are some of my research tips and uh, my research journey until now. I hope I have helped the research community. Thank you very much for inviting me as the keynote speaker. Uh, thank you, Muhammad. I hope uh, if there's another opportunity, it will be my pleasure to join you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you, Dr. Asif Khan. You, you have so many research here. You already have all the questionnaire items for Workplace One. Uh, so Workplace One, uh, for this research, I have uh, used a second order construct. Uh, the first order constructs are fun activities, co-worker socialization, uh, manager support for fun, plan interaction. All of these first order constructs have their own research items. So you need to calculate the first order and second order, um, first order uh, constructs, and you will, be able, you will be able to calculate the workplace one. And for the research items, um, you can either wait for my research to get published, or there are already many researches based on workplace one or similar uh, constructs. You just need to like when when you are when you are searching on Google Scholar, you just need to add like workplace fun appendix or workplace fun questionnaire, and you, you can find the items which are already used by previous researchers. You not you do not need to uh, you know compose or write the research items from scratch. You know it will be just a waste of time and energy. You can use the items which are already done by the previous researchers. And uh, you can just modify them. You can easily modify them. You just need to cite the research paper which you have used to con uh, to uh, construct your uh, questionnaire. So uh, I hope I answered. Okay. Okay. Uh, the the core of the question. Like uh... as a construct, workplace one is composed of four indicators. One is fun activities. One is for to socializing. Uh, third indicator is uh, measure support for fun, and fourth indicator is find interaction. So, and let's suppose um, you know 
the question is what is workplace fun so i would suppose like the environment of the workplace to be satisfying in such a way you have many fun activities with your uh, colleagues you have uh, several fun activities with your um, managers you know it's a very flat hierarchy you don't have a tall hierarchy like uh, you know uh, mid-level managers senior managers uh, you know executives and then you know the top executive if it's a flat hierarchy, you normally have fun activities. Nowadays, most of the uh, you know organizations they're opting for flat hierarchy to improve uh, you know the workers' innovative abilities. Okay, and okay, how about your um, socialization um, practices with your coworkers? Okay, are you socializing with them? You know, are you uh, having enough conversations with them, you know, how about the, the you know, conversation, are they friendly? Okay, uh, are your workers friendly towards you? Okay, how about, uh, you know, manager? You know, is there manager support for fun or is the manager just doing it for the sake of uh, KPI or something? Okay, so, and how about the client interaction? When, when you're interacting with your clients, Okay, are you doing it in a fun way or in a light way or, you know, it's just a headache for you to interact with the client. So all of these things will uh, compose workplace fun. If all of these things are positive, of course, you know, the employees, they want to improve. The employee is happy at work. Now the employee wants to improve its innovative behavior. So what will the employee do? Okay, let me learn a new software. Let me learn a new statistical software. Okay, let me improve my um, marketing ability. Let me read a new book to improve my uh, reading skills, to improve my uh, strategy, strategy making capability. Okay, so these are like some of the tactics which the employees would do to improve their work behavior. Okay, that's good. Uh, does it mean that uh, you will find the fun work? If you find the fun activities, fun co-workers, fun manager, or some kind like that, and fun client. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And okay. There are the four parts of workplace fun. Okay, that's good. Okay. For the certificate or our keynote speaker, it will just flash in the screen. And may I read to you the, the content of the citation? Certificate of Appreciation awarded to Dr. Asif Khan for contributing as keynote speaker from the 5th Academic Seminar and International Conference 2024 with the theme on the innovation in vocational education to enhance the global competitiveness dated February 24 to 25, 2024. Signed by ASIC, General Chair, Philip Patahul Arifen, STM, NCSC, and signed by the head of APDOVI, Dr. Arman Paste, STNMT. Let's give him a warm up applause. Congratulations. Oh, truly, it is, truly, it has been a, a morning filled with valuable insights, encompassing oh. various methodologies and discussions pertaining to mathematical equations, formulas, diverse contracts, and even some writing tips. And it is a courtesy, courtesy from our two respected keynote speakers. But let me assure you, this is just the beginning of our enriching journey. We still have two more keynote speakers await us and will be introduced later by our moderators. So gear up for what lies ahead. At this juncture, allow me to hand over the screen to Mr. Gali for some reminders and messages before we conclude our morning sessions. And also, before we will end, we will give the certificate for the moderator. Uh, first, we have here Miss Juan Guillante. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
So I'll just quick read. Certificate of Appreciation awarded to uh, Yuli Yandek for contributing as moderator from the 5th Academic Seminar and International Conference 2024 with a team on innovation in vocational education to enhance a global competitiveness dated February 24 to 25, 2024. Signed by ASIC General Chair Phil Patahul Arifen, STM, Eng, SC, and signed by the head of the APDOBI, Dr. Arman Faste, ST, and MD. So I'll give back the screen to Mr. Gali for some reminders. Thank you, Dustin. Thank you, Gali. Thank you, Dr. Faste.